Hello, this is Paul Lennon, a former legionary of Christ. I've been telling my story uh, during the past uh, several tapes, but today is Holy Thursday for us Catholics, and so I'm taking a hiatus from my normal story to talk about today, to talk about Holy Thursday and the Catholic tradition. The title of my talk today is Can I Forgive the Legion of Christ and Nuestro Padre Maciel? Today is a special day for Christians and for Catholics. It's also a special day for the Jewish people who yesterday evening began their Passover. This year the Jewish Passover coincides with Christians Holy Week when we memorialize the suffering of Jesus, the saving suffering of Jesus, whom we consider a prophet and more than a prophet, the Messiah. Today we Catholics celebrate major events in our tradition, the Last Supper of Jesus who gives new meaning to the Passover. He is the Lamb of God whose blood will be shed for the sins of many slash all. He creates the Eucharist mass when he says, this bread is my body given up for you. This wine is my blood shed for you. Simultaneously, Jesus creates this priesthood by giving his apostles the mandate to repeat his new sacrament. Do this in memory of me. And then Jesus shows his love for his apostles by washing their feet. He tells us to love and serve each other not to be served, but to serve. Pope Francis today preached forgiveness and called on us to forgive others. Hence uh, the title of, of this uh, conversation with you. Can I forgive Father Maciel and the Legion of Christ? Do I acknowledge that I have received good things from the Legion of Christ, that not all has been bad? As a matter of fact, I have written a little book in Spanish, at least for now, uh, helped by my wonderful um, editor, that not all is bad in the Legion of Christ. And I call this book, um, Por que me hice legionario de Cristo? Why did I become a legionary of Christ, the good, the bad, and the beautiful? As I watched now the Papal Mass, uh, I heard the choir singing Gregorian chant. Ubi caritas et amor, Deus ibi est. Congregavit nos in unum Christi amor, an old Latin hymn which we sing around this time of the year and whenever we're celebrating love. Where there is charity and love, there is God. The love of Christ has gathered us eh, in one. That is one good thing that we got from the Legion of Christ. Not that it comes from the Legion as such. Father Maciel did not invent this. But uh, Father Maciel, when he built his uh, religious order, Lego, he put together many Catholic uh, elements, very traditional elements, some of which naturally were good, or at least some legionary uh, former members may think so. Sometimes when you leave the Legion, it's like being hit in the face with a football. And when you're hit in the face with a football, your eyes may be affected and they may become uh, blood spattered. And uh, you can't see anything. And so everything may appear horrible in the Legion of Christ. Well, a lot of things are horrible, but Thank goodness, not everything. So do I believe that there are several elements that we can salvage 
from our shipwrecked lives in the Legion of Christ? Yes, I do believe so. And that's what I've been doing for the last whenever <laughs> since I left. There is a bigger question which may come to mind now and uh, which troubles many Catholics. It's a big question. Can I forgive the Catholic Church? Now, when I hear this, people ask me, I'm the ex-priest, you know, and they're asking me these questions because maybe they're afraid to ask uh, active priests that kind of a question because it's kind of a, it's a really tough question. And I don't shy away from it because uh, I've asked myself the question many times. And, um, but uh, I find myself kind of, um, what is it, apologizing for the church or uh, uh, protecting the church or I don't know what it is. Um, so the first thing I tell them is, do not confuse the church, our church, with the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. So, um, I always tell people they're probably referring to the church leaders when they say that, or the ministers, or the, what I call the hierarchy of the church, the leadership of the church, the ones, that, unfortunately, those who are ordained <laughs> and active ministers, they are the hierarchy because we are now, I'm one of the lay people, we don't have like, a, shall we say, we don't have any medals now, we are not sergeants or majors or anything, we're just plain soldiers now in, in the Church of Jesus Christ, you know, and so that's us, you know. But we are um, all baptized, and uh, those of us who are baptized, uh, ipso facto, as they say in Latin, we are members of the Church. We are the Church. Now, we've got big problems here because now the Catholic Church, especially in some countries, is terribly divided between traditionalists and conservatives and, excuse me, <laughs> traditionalists and progressives and all these kind of things which are kind of pathetic and very painful to me, I can say that, and hopefully to other people. We're, we're now like, we're, we're like divided along political lines in, in the United States especially, which is not the will of Jesus, let us say so that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art one, and I in thee. And this is what I was preaching yesterday to my evangelical friends here in, in Guatemala. They're kind of startled, you know. I say, hey, I'm a Catholic, but, you know, hey, I read the Bible, and uh, I understand some of it, uh, and I studied it once upon a time. But anyway, this is important for us all to remember. So, that's just my take. That's my particular, you know, uh, what is it called? The dead horse that I'm constantly beating. Uh, I'm a Catholic, very much uh, my way and very, uh, in a very loose way, if I maybe may say so. But uh, I'm baptized and they can't take that away from me, even if they kick me out of the priesthood or I ask to leave, excuse me, I'm still a Catholic, so. Well, stay on task. So uh, you're mistaking the hierarchy of the church and, and, and perhaps some of its rules and the ministers, but that is not the whole church, thank goodness. We are the people of God, according to the authorized teaching of the Second Vatican Council, 1962 to 65, if we would only come back to that, study it and assimilate it. Always going over time, forgive me. Anyway, I'm paradoxically, I have some good news for you. A former legionary of Christ, Father Thomas Berg, has written a wonderful book. And it was uh, three years ago, I see now. Uh, he felt hurt and by, betrayed by the Legion of Christ. He left the Legion, stayed in the priesthood, joined the diocesan priesthood, and this is an excellent book, Hurting in the Church, A Way Forward for Wounded Catholics. And in this book, he faced what I was just talking about. Although it might not occur to many, it is hard also for an ex-priest to forgive the church. A little bit of testimony now from Paul Lennon. Because when church authorities grant you 
the permission to step down from the active ministry. They give you a kind, a little kick in the behind, and they hand you a nasty document called a rescript. Tells you all the things you can no longer do. For example, naturally, no celebrating Holy Mass or other sacraments. That's okay because you asked for that. But no preaching, no teaching in a Catholic institution, no reading at Mass, no this, that, and the other. So a kind of a punitive goodbye, a smack in the face with the silken glove. However, as you can see, some of us are stubborn and we just won't go away. Coming back to my question, and hopefully nearing the conclusion of this uh, long paragraph, parenthesis, can I forgive the Legion of Christ? It is relatively easy to forgive all rank and file legionaries. Of course, because just like me, they are victims of a harmful group which I consider a cult, so they are trapped. They're trapped in this group. Once you, one of the characteristics of the group is easy to enter and hard to leave. This is a rule of thumb. A harmful group which sometimes makes you do things, do bad things to others, which you would not normally do if you had not become a member of this group. So you're acting with your false personality, with your pseudo personality, which you took on, which has gradually been grafted onto your real personality and kind of smothered it while you're in the institution. Cult characteristic. It is harder to forgive the superiors because to some extent they have bought into Maciel's evil kingdom. You might say they have eaten the yeast of Father Maciel in Jesus-like words. Bought into his evil kingdom, the kingdom of manipulating and exploiting others. Some of these members, ex-members, are my friends, and I know that the noble ones among them acknowledge their misdeeds. They suffer. They're sorry for what they did. Maybe some of them for recruiting or for mistreating or for giving these uh, cruel orders to them when they were superiors. And they take responsibility for this now and try to make amends. Some of them go to great extremes to make amends for their misdeeds. It is even harder to forgive Father Maciel and some of my friends and colleagues cannot forgive him. I can forgive him for what he did to me. He was just a very disturbed, malignant narcissist who spewed his venom over all. But I can ask myself, opening a window. How did that little boy from Cotija, born in 1920, I believe, in a Catholic community with three uncles who were, who were bishops, how did that little, maybe once upon a time, little innocent boy become such a monster? This question opens the door to some kind of understanding of this miserable human being. What is really difficult to me, so is Father Maciel. The jury is still out, I might say. Uh, bueno. What is really hard for me to forgive about Father Maciel is for abusing my fellow legionaries, 
especially the prepubescent boys, his own seminarians. Here we are up against what is called Mysterium Iniquitatis, the mystery of evil, which is present in the world, present in the church. Something that the whole Bible struggles to explain from the very beginning, from Genesis chapter 3. How did evil enter the world? How did sin and suffering enter the wonderful world that God initially created? I leave that for your meditation. On this day, it may console us to remember, so closing on a hopeful note here, that at this uh, same time as Jesus was betrayed by a close friend, he unleashed an invincible love, uh, an infinite love, one might say, a great love, uh, an all-powerful love was unleashed in the world by Jesus that we remember today and especially tomorrow. There's a burst of love that will never go away. This is our belief. His love for mankind by giving his life for us, in the words of St. Paul, where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Romans chapter 5, verse 18. As we say when we renew our baptismal promises, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church, of the real church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us continue to celebrate these mysteries of our Christian faith. And together with our Jewish brothers and sisters, let us, come, let us forgive the mystery of our salvation. This is what we're all celebrating, both Christians and, and Jews. It was the, the story of our liberation. Well, we Catholics celebrate the same very thing. We Christians, our freedom, our freedom from sin, our freedom from all the bad that's in the world, the freedom from, we have the strength to fight against evil now in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. And now this, this is our new mission in life. And we continue to struggle also against the great evil of the disease that entered the world. Uh, we believe millions of thousands of years ago in the mystery of evil that we are suffering from now, that humanity is suffering from now. And we ask for freedom for this. We ask for salvation from this plague. And we can always pray for this. We can always ask for this. That good Lord have mercy on us and free us from this plague as soon as is possible. Greetings to you all. The ex-priest sends blessings to you all. Take care.